For the first time in five years, a former Army sergeant held captive by the Taliban is free, back on American soil. This is the plane landing in San Antonio early Friday morning and on board Bo Bergdahl and a host of people to help him make that transition back to a normal life, if that's possible. There's a physician, a psychiatrist, an officer, what's called a personal recovery specialist. That's part of the team that helped bring him back to the U.S. And right now, Bergdahl remains at Brook Army Medical Center. He has a whole room set up there, and at his side, attorneys, chaplain, security, and financial specialists. But he still hasn't seen his family. And that meeting, according to experts, could be the most stressful part of this whole reintegration process. So joining me to discuss psychologist and combat stress coach Terry Lyles and retired Air Force Colonel Lee Ellis who was in fact shot down over Vietnam in 1967 and endured more than five years in captivity in and around Hanoi so thank you both for being with us good to be You're welcome you. all right Dr. Lyles let's let's begin here mm -hmm. and talk about this upcoming meeting with Bergdahl's parents sources are telling us he still hasn't spoken to his parents since his release and I think for a lot of us it's kind of hard to understand why any thoughts? Well, you know, I, I think to the outside personnel, it does probably look a little strange, but we don't know all the backstory. We just know parts of the backstory. But it's not uncommon for someone who's been in that level of trauma not to want to reconnect with his past until he needs to. And then after that integration process is fulfilled and seeing his family and loved ones, I'm sure it will get a little easier. But the whole stress of not knowing and the anticipation of not knowing is a big deal. I mean, he's been through a lot over the past mm -hmm. five years, and this is a whole nother stress level he's not even ready for until they get him to that point. And I'm sure, you know, they're, they're taking their time. They want to do this very thoughtfully and not push him yes. to do anything before he's ready. Colonel, you were in captivity, as we mentioned, even longer than Sergeant Bergdahl. So let's put aside the question surrounding his capture, why he left his base. What do you think is different about the challenges he's now facing compared to maybe what you faced during and after your captivity when you were in Vietnam? Well, I think, first of all, if he has, in fact, been in solitary confinement for two years, that's going to be a major hurdle. Uh, we were in solitary from time to time, and some of our leaders were in solitary for as much as four years, but we had contact with other Americans. And then we had the last two years of the war when it was more live and let live, thanks to the American people who put a lot of pressure on the communists about our treatment, that we had time to decompress together with our friends who had gone through a similar situation, and that made all the difference in the world for us. So I think his situation of being alone and uh, not having contact with other Americans who thought like him and talked like him, I think that's going to make it much more difficult for him to adjust and to get his feet on the ground and start running again. You mentioned you had that kind of extra support system that way, people who could really relate and understand what yes. you were going through. Colonel, describe your release and your return home. And I know you touched on it a little bit, but in terms of sort of the process that Bo Bergdahl is going through versus what you went through, how, how do those two compare? Well, I came home as a result of the negotiated release and the Paris peace talks. And uh, we were released over a period of about 60 days in large groups of maybe 100, 120. I was in the third large group. And we were handed over by the Vietnamese at Gialam Airport in Hanoi. We were handed over to the American authorities. You can see there I was with uh, Senator John McCain. We were captured 11 days apart. We came home together. We were handed over. We flew to the Philippines. We spent two days in Clark Air Base uh, Hospital, getting checked over very quickly, getting a uniform. Then we flew back to the States where we met with our families right away. Wow. So everything was very quick, that whole yes. turnaround. It very was. And we, and we were able to call them from the Philippines and talk to them within a few hours. Wow, amazing. Um, you know, unfortunately, we're out of time. But if you can very, very quickly, Dr. Lyles, talk about uh, how Bergdahl is learning to do things on his own since he couldn't even make decisions for himself for the past five years. Well, that's going to be the challenge, and I appreciate the Colonel's service, as he mentioned, and, you know, this augmentation of going back to reality. I mean, his reintegration process is going to be very different because, you know, he was five years in captivity, no English speaking as far as we know, uh, in inhumane situations. So his process of recovery is going to be slow and ongoing, and, you know, his family meeting is going to be stressful, but it will be the first step of his recovery that will really be ongoingly for years. But he'll mm -hmm. be fine as long as he has good support system around him. All right. Big step. All right. Dr. Lyles, as well as Colonel Lee Ellis, thank you both.
thank you. we'll be right back.